Joe. Black Kula. So I am an attorney appointed by the court to, uh, I don't work for you and I do not work for mom. I'm like independently appointed to investigate circumstances surrounding your family to see what I would believe to be the best custody and placement schedule for your daughter. Okay. So I would go to court and say, you know, Your Honor, I think that there should be joint or soul or, you know, dad should see on these days and things like that. Okay. And how do you pronounce that term again? Guardian ad litem. Most okay. people call us a GAL, so that might be um, something you've heard also. That's sort of like an easier way to say it. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. I have no idea where my daughter is. I haven't heard from her since October 14th, 2018. My question is, how are you to be the GAL in the situation if no one's able to get in touch with the mother? Um, that is a good question. I was just sort of taking a look over your file and... Um, so I will, you know, I don't want to discourage you, but I will say it's difficult for the court to um, sort of make a 17-year-old do things because they're going to be 18 soon and then the court doesn't have any power over them. So what I will do is essentially try to locate mom. Um, I, you know, we have like some social workers here and um, I can try to see if I can find an email address or the address we have on file. We're going to sort of send letters and see if she contacts us. But... Um, if she doesn't contact us, there's not really much that I can do before the next court hearing. I have just tried to call the phone number that I have on file, and it's just like a constant busy tone. So I don't know if it truly is like maybe a house phone and it, you know, it's off the hook and it's busy or if the line is disconnected. It didn't say disconnected, so I'm not sure. But, you know, I'll exhaust all ways I can to try to find her. Why was uh, October of 2018 the last time you saw her? Because her mother completely cut me off after that date. She would no longer allow me to see her. Uh, she wouldn't return my text messages. She wouldn't return my phone calls. Things are difficult with me being here in Chicago. And, you know, it isn't like I could just go to the address. And she completely cut us off. I mean, as far as slow mail, emails, social media, she's blocked me on social media. And I even have audio recordings. I have audio recordings of myself and Justice the day before the last day I saw her. I got audio recordings of her basically telling me what she was going through. But the fact of the matter is that I was completely cut off immediately when I dropped my daughter off. I even have the last picture that her and I took with me hugging her when I dropped her off. I, I know this sounds cliche, but I didn't do anything wrong. Precious Angel Parker, she was very jealous of the relationship, uh, you know, of me and my daughter. I, I talked with Justice for about an hour and a half, and I'm so glad I recorded that information because she said so much stuff that I've indexed and cataloged properly, hoping that, that there's a time with, that if I ever get in front of a judge, and I do understand that Justice is 16. She just turned 16. She'll be 17 this year. And I do understand. I've been told that before from other attorneys that, at that age, man, they might, they're starting to kind of come to their own mind, but I need for her to know by hook or by crook that her father is doing the best that he can to get in touch with her and continue the relationship. That was good. We had a good relationship. And that, that's what's so frustrating about this is because I don't have a problem with child support. Mind you, I'm very irritated about the fact that with the state of Wisconsin relentlessly and religiously takes that money every two weeks out of my check. I'm a security guard. I don't make a lot of money, but you would think that I would have some type of support. And for me to go up to Milwaukee, for them to tell me that, that Milwaukee doesn't even know what Precious is. And thank God one of the people accidentally told me, looking at the records, like, yeah, she isn't even in state anymore. And I had some people tracking her. She's down in like Mississippi somewhere. I feel- You believe your daughter and her mother are in Mississippi? Yes. Matter of fact, I've been told that. She's not even Who in. Who told you that? I paid for one of those services. Like online finder kind of thing? Yeah. And also I had some people that kind of know how to navigate around. And they let me know that she's been in Mississippi since January or February of 2021. And I don't think that that's fair. I've been religiously paying this child support for someone that isn't even in the state. I mean, come on, man. That, that can't be fair. For them to tell me when I drove up to Milwaukee, we, all we know is we deposit the money. Do you know any of uh, her family, like 
No. You, you know any cousins, no. nieces, nephews, anyone that you can? No, but because... What steps have you tried to take to... Um, I know you mentioned that you paid that service. Have you gone to court before to try to get a placement schedule or anything? No, because prior to October of 2018, I didn't have to. Now, mind you, we had a, a pretty decent visitation schedule. And when I say decent... That pretty much meant whenever Precious felt like it, if she wasn't in a mood, if she wasn't at it with her fiancé or whatever the hell. So I pretty much had to walk on eggshells. I still got text messages from Precious pretty much dictating to me how I saw Justice and when I saw her. One of the last text messages that when we talked, she said that she wasn't allowing Justice to come see me anymore. And that if I wanted to visit my daughter, I was going to have to come to Milwaukee to see her and would only be able to spend with her a, a day. But to answer your question directly, Precious is from New Orleans. She came to Milwaukee in August of 2005 as a Katrina evac. Precious had no family there. She's not from Milwaukee. She's from the South. And, okay. she, and she's pretty much like a gypsy. The only family that she did have, they came up from Louisiana to visit with Precious and to stay with her. But once they fell out, they left. So, in other words, no, I don't have any relative information on anyone. I've even had friends of mine track Precious on Facebook. And it's almost like she had some type of app or something because as soon as she kind of caught wind that someone that was kind of connected with me, she automatically blocked the people. Matter of fact, that's how I got, a, I, how I got the last picture of Justice two years ago because... Anybody that I'm friends with, she blocked. So I got rid of my Facebook account. Precious is the definition of a living troll. I know that she knows exactly where I am and what I'm doing, and she's deliberately doing this. I know that woman like the back of my hand. I got documented information where one minute they go and they're able to see Precious, but a day later they go back and now she's disappeared. And this happened with four of my different friends. On four different occasions. I don't know how she's doing that. You know, I know this sounds like almost like unbelievable. But, I mean, honestly, this is the most that I've been able to talk about this to someone to try to, you know, arm you with, with enough information. Look, I've lost five full years with my daughter. And I'm hoping that the last conversation that I had with her, that I recorded, I pray that she clings to that information that her father loves her very much. I'm a content provider. So now what I've been doing for the past year is that I have been placing her name in the algorithms of my videos. You wouldn't be able to see them, but I've been embedding her name in code. So if she ever Googles herself or Googles her father, what my stage name for 30 years has been Joe Blackula, and she knows that. If she Googles me, then she's going to see the messages that I've left for her. And the only thing that I could think would be that her mother some kind of way is preventing her from whatever the hell. But at the same time, my daughter would tell me about that her brother, her older brother, and her younger sister would talk very bad about me. And I let her know in those recordings that those are lies. Those are lies. You know, and she was like, she knows. She said it. She said that she had dreams of running away and coming to Chicago which is one of the key reasons why I moved and got a bigger place for her to come live with me. And I told Justice that, hey, look, this is going to be your bedroom. And I swear for Lord, I got a feeling Justice went back when I took her back to Milwaukee. She told her mother that, and that's when all of our communication got cut off because Justice could not wait to come back to Chicago to live with me. She couldn't wait. So immediately after that, I get cut off. That isn't a coincidence. So pl please pardon me once again for, for venting like this. So you think that's the reason maybe that she um, just sort of vanished because mom didn't want her to come and stay with you? I am more than 200% certain. If I ever was able to get in front of an attorney or a judge that would listen, I got it recorded. I got the whole two hours recorded and indexed. And Justice was adamant about coming and live with me. She said flat out of her mouth, I do not want to go back to Milwaukee. I am not treated right. She told me about how her precious whipped her and the, the one of her teachers saw her bruises and the teacher sent somebody to the house and precious told justice that she'd better lie to them people. 
and tell her that she fell or something like that. And then after the people left, Precious whipped her. Justice would have to take her mother's phone and would sneak in the closet and would call me, whispering. She'd call me like once a week or twice a week, something like that, sneaking whisper on the phone. And then Justice told me that, that she found the phone and saw that she was calling me. And that she was mad about that. And that she whipped her about that. I got all of this so recorded. Let me see here. Your court date is March 25th. Yes. Okay. What I want to do is, um, because, I mean, I'm not saying what you're saying is not important, but, you know, until we sort of find her, there's not very much that I can do at the moment. I understand. So I want to take some time to see, you know, if I can locate her and then call you back and sort of give you, you know, if I found anything or, you know, if I didn't, you know, maybe we can work together or something. Are you available Monday? Because I, tomorrow, I, I don't know if I'll have time to, you know, really, I don't know if maybe... I don't know, but now that you're saying Mississippi, you know, that makes it, I thought she was somewhere in Milwaukee where I could call like Milwaukee schools and no. say, you know, does this student go here? But this is going to be much more complicated than I thought initially. So do you have any time um, Monday or either two or any time next week actually to speak with me? Man, look, if you give me a time, I'll make myself available. That's the long, short version of that. Well, what, uh, do you work? Yes, I work from... 6.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm, I'm a security guard for Cook County, for, for the Cook County Health and Hospital Systems here in Chicago. You know, they knew that I took off work last week strictly for... And I'm assuming she didn't show up to that one either, correct? She did not. And honestly, I yeah. wasn't even expecting her. And the judge said pretty much said the same thing. Yeah, that's the difficult part. I mean, if people don't show... I mean, we could ask for a warrant for her arrest. I mean, that is an option, but, you know, she's not in Wisconsin. You know, I just don't know. So that's why I said I just want to look at all options to sort of see what we can do going forward. Out of curiosity, what could Precious Angel Parker had been arrested for? In certain circumstances, a judge can order your arrest if you don't show up to court. Okay. If you're, like, ordered to show to court and you don't, they could. I mean, I'm not a judge, so I don't have that power, but... You know, I could request it. Um, I have done that before. Sometimes they've granted it. Sometimes they haven't. You know, it just depends. Like I said, if we truly think she's not in Wisconsin, I don't know how, you know, valid that would be, how helpful. But, you know, it's, you know, it's something. So we just sort of try to, you know, do everything we can to figure out where she is and then go from there. Do you have the abilities to possibly find out exactly where she is? Um, so I don't know if maybe we could do a private investigation. I don't know. I won't tell you yes or no. I have to check on that. I get it. So look, and I'm, I'm really not trying to get anybody in trouble. I will say this much. It was a person that worked in that courthouse building when I came there on that Tuesday mm -hmm. to start the process. There was a person in that building that looked at that monitor and let me know, yeah, I'm looking right at it. She's not even in state. It felt like my heart dropped out of me. Because it looked like she yeah. was looking at something, she, and she told me specifically. She said, well, I'm not able to say exactly where she is. I'm not able mm -hmm. to tell you that. But I'm looking right at it, and she's not here, and she hasn't been here since February of 2020. And then that's when I just said to myself, now, I, 2020 or 20? I thought it was January 2021. Yeah, I, I, she either said 2020 or 2021. Please pardon me, brother. I'm, okay. I'm, uh, but that's all right. But I, I know it. I, I know it was one of those. It was either January or February of 20. So it's been or some 20. years regardless. Yeah, she's been going a grip is my point. Me and a friend of mine had went to Precious's last address that I have, but we were mm -hmm. assuming that if Justice still lived there, and I got there, like, we got there at 5.30 in the morning, and we watched that address from 5.30 until 8 a.m., up until we knew that the courthouse opened, and then that's when we pretty much came to the conclusion that they didn't live there anymore. The plan was if when Justice came out, when she went to the bus stop or wherever she was going, well, I was just going to pull up, figure out a way how to let her know Justice is daddy. And for, yeah. because I didn't know if her mother or her brother watched her go to the bus stop or oh, hell we might have followed the school bus but I look I was trying to be delicate with the situation because I didn't want to come to Milwaukee and get arrested you understand yeah. but desperate times and I'm sure you know the rest of it but my backup plan and even along with it was to come in the courthouse and pay the fees to figure out a way to get this done legally because the state of Wisconsin took the six grand that I had in my savings 
that I was about to pay the attorney up there to start doing the work to start legally getting this process done. Do you know if you all have like a custody and placement um, schedule in the past? Have you all ever gone to court for no. justice? No, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I am going to, I'll see what I can find, like I said. So, uh, you know, I'm going to work on it for sure. And I have you on my calendar for Tuesday, January 30th at 4.30 p.m. Okay. And what is your title again? I'm an attorney. For who? The Legal Aid Society of Milwaukee. The Legal Aid Society of Milwaukee. Oh, so they outsource to you all? Yep. Um, so essentially when you go to court, the court pays. They send us sort of work to do, and then uh, we're appointed by the court to basically do their like um, sort of work, basically. All right. I appreciate your 25 minutes that you spent with me. And I I look forward to hearing back from you on Tuesday. All right. You enjoy your weekend. And, um, you know, if you find anything, definitely reach out to me. But if not, I will call you Tuesday. All right. Thank you very much. This is Attorney Karen Ewings, the guardian at Light Up for Justice. Yes, sir. So I just wanted to uh, call and, you know, give you an update. I don't really have much, but I don't want you to think I forgot. Not a problem. I reached out to child support to see if they could provide me with an updated address. But so far, I haven't gotten anything. Um, I tried to sort of look around to see if mom had any criminal cases in um, Mississippi. So far, I haven't found anything. I'm going to maybe try to scour through social media, but, I mean, it's really just going to be what I can find. So I, I haven't found anything yet, but I don't want you to think I forgot about you, so I just want to let you know that. I'm glad to hear from you. I won't schedule another phone call with you right away just because I don't know what I'm going to find, but I'm going to uh, ask my paralegal to sort of look at it too. Maybe she knows something that I don't or can find something better. Okay. Well, I will also be looking on my end, and if I find anything helpful, I'll definitely get you the information. Yeah, please do. Anything you find will be a use. Bye-bye. Fucking wow.